In this video, we're going to look at part three of the Repeats in Sibelius 7 part one article from the AVID knowledge base. So part three of this article looks at the correct way to enter first, second and third or larger repeat structures in your score and get them to play back properly. So I've got an example here of one that's been entered incorrectly and it emulates the incorrect example in the score to an extent. This one's a bit different because it's got four different endings as opposed to three. It's just the one stave. For demonstration purposes, showing a variety of drum fills at the end of a repeated section seems like a pretty appropriate place to use such a feature. And what you'll find here in terms of what's incorrect about this score is that I've tried to add these first, second and third ending lines inside a single repeat structure and it technically is all part of the same repeat structure but when it comes to first, second and third endings Sibelius needs to be told that they're part of an existing structure by adding end repeat lines to each bar line that comes after the first, second or third in this case. You don't add one after the fourth because that's the last one that just continues on from there but when it comes to the closed bracket first, second and third ending lines in this case all of these need to have an end repeat bar line after each instance. So what's going to happen as I play this one through is it's going to basically play through to repeat ending 1 and jump directly to repeat ending 4 ignoring the uh, second and third ending lines because the repeat ending bar lines are not in place where Sibelius expects them to be. So I'll just play it through and you'll see the symptom in action. So definitely not the way we'd expect this, uh, this section to play back. So with that in mind, we'll select this bar line after the second ending, add an end repeat, and another one after the first ending. And you can see I've actually got a second structure down here, which is also broken, and because this one's been entered incorrectly after we'd already entered the top level ones incorrectly. This one has also wiped out bar numbers down here where you would normally see bar 12. So if I add the correct ending lines, I've got a shortcut set up for these. Yeah, even just by adding that one, it's restored the bar number here. And we'll just add that one as well. So what it's actually telling Sibelius in this case is that each time one of these occurs and it's got a repeat ending bar line at the end of that particular bar, uh, it's treating that as the end of this repeat structure. This is different to the second example where we showed nested repeats and the problems that they can uh, create because there's no nested repeat actually going on here because the first time around it's just looking at that as the full structure. Second time around it's ignoring that completely and looking at this as the full structure. And third time around it will add this one to the end so it'll only consider that as the only end repeat line that matters and fourth time around we'll just jump to the fourth ending line and off it goes and an interesting thing to look at in relation to these if I just bring my inspector window over here so we can see if you look at the play on pass checkboxes as I select each of these lines first one forces Sibelius to look at that structure under that first ending line for the first pass. The second pass, it forces it to look at this one as long as it's got a repeat bar ending line that tells it that it's part of this same repeat structure. Then the third time ending line ticks it for pass three. And of course we've got a bar line uh, repeat ending bar line here that tells it it's still part of that structure as well. And number four of course ticks it for number four and because it's an open-ended repeat ending line it automatically ticks it for the last time ending so it knows what to do. So now what you'll see when I play through the score is this drum beat is going to play through 
with four distinct fills at the end of the four repeats of this repeat section. so forth and so forth. So if you ever run into trouble when you're trying to create this structure in one of your scores, uh, please do refer to this information and it should get you back on the right track.